Hey everybody, Tony D, back with another video. Saddle up partners, we're gonna tell you how to write a Western. Yes, a Western. Um, I've written one Western and uh, it was fun. I like the time period a lot. Number one rule, of course, is you gotta do your research. A Western is essentially a historical drama, even if you're making up all the characters and the events. But you gotta know the time period. You gotta understand the history. Um, the year is very important because that's gonna dictate the technology, uh, the events around your events, and what's you know going on. So uh, some of the sources I used to use, at least to get started, these aren't primary sources, but uh, they're kind of interesting nonetheless. Um, I used to use the, uh, uh, sometimes I use role-playing games, historical role-playing games. Uh, there was a game called Boot Hill, and the interesting thing about Boot Hill is it would list the guns your characters could buy, but it also listed the year that those guns were available. And so in the game, if you set your, you know, your campaign in 1870, you know, all the guns invented up to that point were available. If you had a gun that wasn't invented until 1871, nobody had it. Uh, so you knew where the top of the technology is. The same thing is true in a Western screenplay. If you're gonna write, you know, a screenplay about the old Wild West, you know, the Wild West is dying, it's coming to its end, uh, you're not gonna do a lot about American Indians because by that time they're uh, a lot of them have, have died or moved to reservations, so they're not as much as a factor. If you're doing the early Wild West, then they're a much bigger factor. Um, the Civil War is an important factor in doing a Western, how far your story is away from the Civil War. The outlaw Josie Wales, which you may remember, Clint Eastwood, he was an ex-Confederate soldier. A lot of characters from the Wild West they end up being ex-Confederates. Jonah Hex from the famous DC Comics, he was an ex-Confederate. Uh, so these are a factor. Um, Dances with Wolves, uh, Kevin Costner's character, he's literally just out of the Civil War when he goes out west and uh, um, stakes a claim. Well, it doesn't stake a claim, but he's assigned to a fort, <laughs> which really isn't much of a fort. And uh, he ends up, you know, befriending the local uh, American Indians. Um, you should know, you know, the major events. Custer's Last Stand uh, is a big one. You know, that was a big deal back then. Uh, the various, uh, you know, gangs, famous uh, Wild West guys, you should know, like Jesse James and Billy the Kid and, and those guys. You should at least know where their era was. And definitely if you're going to mention them, you have to know. You have to know exactly when your screenplay takes place and where those characters are at that time. If they're already dead and you mention them like they're alive, you really messed up. Um, now, those elements are a little less important if you're doing like, you know, a fun, crazy Western like um, A Million Ways to Die in the West, which, by the way, is a very underrated movie. I would recommend that movie. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and Seth MacFarlane's great in it, and there's there's a bit with Gilbert Gottfried that is not to be missed. Um, so, uh, you know, in a movie like that, in a comedy, you don't have to worry about it too much. In a movie like Silverado, if you remember that, you don't have to worry about it too much. Even in some serious movies where those historical events don't play as uh, uh, much of an importance. So, for instance, uh, Unforgiven which is a great Western, probably the best Western ever made as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's just so good. That, I think, takes place probably late in the Wild West, I would say. There aren't Native American Indians in it uh, that I recall. I don't think there are. Uh, but they're definitely not a big factor, you know, in the movie. It's more about, you know, the, the town, the prostitutes, the guys who run the town, and Clint Eastwood and his his gang, he, who he comes out of retirement to lead and, you know, it all goes wrong. Uh, but it's such a glorious uh, ending. I mean, Unforgiven. Yeah, watch that. Great movie. Um, so if you're writing a Western, 
do your research. Now, beyond the research, follow the three act structure. Um, it's, it's very solid. You, you're gonna want some action, of course. It's a Western. People expect some action. You're gonna expect some horseback riding and some shooting. Uh, um, you know, you're, you're, you're probably gonna move the shooting towards the third act, end of the second, towards the third act. You don't wanna do too much shooting in the beginning, necessarily, depending on what kind of characters you have. You also have to understand, you know, the real Wild West versus the movie Wild West. You can't just watch movies because movies give you a distorted view of the Wild West. I mean, if you just watch movies, you think the Wild West was this, you know, every day people were shooting themselves in the street and, you know, it was just crazy all the time and uh, life was cheap and people were drinking and there were gunfights just everywhere. That's not the way it was. It was actually kind of boring. Um, those gunfights were extremely rare. Most people were, you know, uh, building businesses, uh, you know, going about their business. Yes, once in a while somebody would get shot, uh, but, you know, it wasn't a daily occurrence. And it wasn't this, like, epic battle of corrupt people versus, you know, not corrupt people or uh, whatever. It, it, it was people trying to live their lives and then, you know, just like now, they're, they're, things happen now, but most people you know, aren't involved in crime. I mean, that was the Wild West crime, you know? If somebody got shot in a bar, that was crime. I mean, it wasn't like people blew it off. Uh, it, was a, it was a crime and it got reported to the cops, you know. They weren't as effective as, say, cops are now. They didn't have the, you know, the money and the materials, but uh, they certainly could investigate things and arrest people and yeah they, they didn't have that's another thing like the, the the various tools available again do your research you know so this is not a time of video cameras or even fingerprints this is a time where like you know the sheriff had to use his best judgment to keep the peace and uh so it was very much a human interaction kind of thing which is uh great for your screenplay because that can add a a lot of extra variables. But they weren't constantly hanging people and people weren't constantly robbing banks. Um, a lot of people used a lot of common sense. You know, they, uh, they made it so it wasn't gonna be easy to rob a bank. You know, if, if they had the money and, and, and they were smart, they, you know, they made those uh, teller windows. There was a reason there were bars, you know. They didn't want people to get back there. Uh, they don't want people to get at the money or the gold. Uh, the economics of that era, you should also understand too. That was a time when paper money was just, it was really just representative of the gold you had in the bank. Okay? People, people's end, end goal wasn't to get that paper, it was to get the gold. If you could get the gold without the paper, so much better. I mean, obviously if you have the paper, you have something, but it's not as good as the gold. People wanted that gold. That was money. Um, so understand that that's the time period. That's the technology. And if you're doing something very realistic, you know, it's going to take a long time for people to get places. It takes a long time for people to get word of things. It's, it's, a, it's a very different time in terms of technology and communication. Yes, there's racism, but don't overblow that either. You know, it, it, it's not like, uh, uh, you know, people were like hanging, you know, being hanged in the street every day. People, people had to get on with their lives. You know, that was certainly a factor, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't the factor. The factor is kind of like what the factor is now, which is money. Money, money, money. You know, people have money, or they don't and they do things for it. Uh, people fell in love, people got married, people had kids, they had a lot of kids, you know? They had farms, uh, they struggled, they endured, um, they did all kinds of things. Most of it was very, very boring. Um, so keep that in mind when you're writing a Western. Um, if you're doing something lighter and more action oriented, you know, it's tough. You don't usually have a, a lot of big buildings to hang off of, you don't 
you're probably not going to have car chases. Uh, <laughs> you know, the most exciting, fast thing in that era is going to be a train. Um, so, you know, a train robbery. Um, another problem with uh, doing a Western is, man, they've been done to death, right? They, you know, when the Western movie in its heyday was the 1950s, early 60s maybe, and they did a ton of them, uh, there, there's a million of them out there. So just about everything you could think of has already happened in a Western. If you watch Deadwood, that's another whole show of Western stuff. If, you, if you've if you seen any of the recent movies, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's been done on Western. So the, the tough part about doing a Western is really digging deep to find something new. Um, that's why you shouldn't count on the accoutrements of a Western to save, your, save you. You really need something about characters. Um, that's, you know, that's what helps you. Something that's unique to those characters, some status change in those characters, some, I mean, that's what happens in Unforgiven. Uh, big spoiler head. The great thing about Unforgiven is through the whole movie, you're hearing about what a badass you know, Clint Eastwood characters used to be, but you don't see it. And you still don't see it. And you're like, how is this guy leading the gang? Why is everybody going to him? Why? And then in the end, you find out why. He is a badass. But it takes like the whole movie for him to wake up. But when he does, man, it's like, oh, it's chilling. <laughs> and you realize, wow. They should not have done that. <laughs> so, um, you know, another thing to learn from is, uh, is our video games. Uh, you got Red Dead Redemption 2 and the earlier games. You know, they can give you definitely a flavor. Take, you know, the various uh, technologies and whatnot with a grain of salt. But you can certainly get a flavor of what it was like, you know, to be in that time. Again, video games and movies are going to give you this distorted reality. But at least you can get sort of the flavor of it. If you want to get a sense of the of the reality of that life, just understand that even just to mail a letter took weeks. Okay? And and some of you are out there scratching your heads going, letter, letter, what's a letter? It's like an email, but it's on paper. Um, so, you know, understand that this is a time when communication, you know, you're on your own. People are on their own, and if you want that Western to ring true to that time period, you really have to set it up that way. And understand too that modern audience, modern audiences don't necessarily relate to that time period. You know, I felt while I was watching The Hateful Eight, which uh, which wasn't bad. You know, it, it just you know I wanted to see. I wanted to see something a little different than that. I did like a lot of it, but ultimately I didn't totally think it worked. And I felt like, you know, as a Western, it uh, wasn't quite there as a Western. It was a little, a little bit off. I wanted the, I wanted something a little more Western-y. It felt more like Hollywood guys pretending to be in a Western um, rather than, you know, being drawn in to the characters. So, but you know, there's something to be said for that. I mean, that, that part was very entertaining. I, Kurt Russell in that movie is amazing. But uh, you know, it's, it's the trappings of all that Western stuff. I think it fails in, in The Hateful Eight because so much of it is inside. And uh, to me, the Western world is very much an outside world where most of the stuff that happens is outside. The gunfights happen outside, the horse, you know, riding a horse or robbing a stagecoach or the train, all that stuff happens outside. Um, you know, gunfights that happen inside, part of the problem is the technology at that time. Things were very dark and shadowy. Uh, so if you're gonna make it realistic, it's it'll be hard to see. And if you lighten everything up, it doesn't feel as real, but you know, I mean, to some extent, I, you know, some of the bits of the Hateful Eight were interesting. 
to explore that building but uh, and the fact that they were all trapped in it that's another thing like the idea of being trapped in a building during a snowstorm it's going to be hard to register to an audience in the modern day they don't see themselves as being trapped anywhere because they've got their cell phones they've got access to the internet uh, which means they can you know see anything the idea of being trapped now is, is a very alien thing you know just to happen you have to kind of do more work in really laying laying the groundwork to understanding that reality you know riding a stagecoach how uncomfortable it is how long it takes all that kind of stuff I think shots of the outside and and the vast emptiness of the American West helps you sort of relate to that time period a little better so consider that when you're writing a Western because if people don't have that in their head, if you're just going to do a gunfight movie, eh, it's set in the West, but it's really just a gunfight movie in a town that that operates uh, like a modern city almost, you know, it's not going to be, it's not going to ring as true. Uh, but that may not matter to you. It may not matter to the audience. You know, if you look at, and this isn't a Western, but if you look at Game of Thrones, the first three or four seasons versus the current seasons, the current seasons they abandon the idea of how long it takes to travel somewhere. So like in the first, definitely in the first two or three seasons, they, they took forever. It took a whole season to get across the kingdom. And now it's just like, zip. Um, so that's definitely changed the tone and the tenor of what they're doing. The fast travel, if you will. You know, without that sort of slow prop plotting travel it kind of changes the tone of everything especially if you're just jumping around people are getting back to town quickly and you're not you're not showing the travel time or at least hinting at it you know there are ways to hint at that in a in a movie you can dissolve that shows passage of time um, you know you could start in the day and they get there at night you can show a quick few shots of people sitting around a campfire because they had to stop for the night and then you have to get up the next day and then move you know you, there are ways to insert that that won't take up a lot of time but will provide the audience with like oh my god it takes forever to get anywhere in that world you know that may not be interesting to watch but it may be necessary to lay the groundwork for the rest of the movie so people don't think like well why doesn't he just go to the next town and get help no the next town is like two days away that's why if that's important to the movie you need to establish that you know if it's going to be like you know they're isolated because they're way in the middle of nowhere then you have to establish that early on so when they're trapped it's like oh man these guys can't they can't get to a doctor that you know a guy's been shot maybe he's bleeding he's in big trouble because they're three days away from a doctor um you know, if the town's surrounded and uh, they got to defend it, they have no other choice. They can't get a word out because there's no way, you know, unless they send a guy on a horse with a message, there's no way. You know, there's all sorts of things you have to think of in that context to make that world make sense. So, number one, do your research. Number two, three act structure. I'm Tony D. This has been Screenwriting Tips. Check me out on Patreon and the Web Comic Factory and Super Fat to see my comics. And uh, I'll see you next time, partner.